Warcraft villains everyone forgot about. In the almost 20 years of World of Warcraft's existence, we have fought against hundreds of enemies. True. Some live in infamy, others not so much. But the Manted are by far some of the most creative world building done in the Warcraft oh, universe. Yeah, those I feel like they people. never really got the respect they deserve. Deep in the lands that would later be called Pandaria, the Manted have resided as far back as the primordial times on Azeroth. They originated from the Akir, oh. a type of old god insectoid that evolved into the mantis-like beings who have swarmed over Azeroth. I One actually didn't know that. That's fascinating. Because like we remember those for like the good old days, right? The uh, the Akir. Like I remember, like they have like this one mount that you can get that is like super super rare. I never got it, unfortunately. <laughs> uh yo. So 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 they actually connect. Did they like uh, move to Pandaria or something, and then they evolved or what? Like, what's happening with like races in Warcraft? Like, it's the same with like elves. If they move to a different place, they change to something else. Like night elves become uh, high elves, and <laughs> like with the nightborn too, it's interesting. But yo, they are like a, a classic race. It's cool actually, though. Razoroth. One of that. the most important roles in Manted society is the Empress. From oh, her, yeah. thousands of Manted are spawned, whose only purpose is to devour. Their insatiable hunger even leading them to consume the weak among their race. Every 100 years, new Manted are spawned, and with their Empress's song, they are guided to consume everyone and everything in their wake. This is the main reason why the Great Wall was built in Pandaria yeah, by the Mogi. Yeah, to stop them from... from they forgot from, one crucial detail. They can fly. Uh, yeah, the, the Manted can fly. We are the extension. You know what? Did they actually know that or not back in the day when they built this wall? Because when I was like flying over there with my mount, I was just thinking... And this was the first time I actually explored this area. I was like, I was thinking, oh, that's actually really nice. Uh, what is over there? And then I fly over there, and there are those wasp-like creatures that can fly too. So I was wondering, why the heck do we even have a freaking world there, right? Like, it makes no sense. Like, did they not know this, or... Or maybe, like, there were, like, two devs in Blizzard, and they had, like, a different kind of idea or information. So one designed those wasp-like thingies, right? Those mantids. And the other one was responsible for, like, maybe, like, the area to look nice or something. I, I think there must have been so either miscommunication <laughs> when they made this or like they really didn't know that law wise and that's why they built it. Yo, that's so weird. I... We are the extension of our Empress's will. <coughs> Ours is but to serve in her divine name. Never to question nor to contemplate. We simply act. We fight, toil and serve so that her vision for us is made reality. The voice her is creepy. It's our reward. Her sorrow, our failure. We will give our lives for the Empress without hesitation. What she dedication. Light, and without her, our lives will be lost to darkness. Wow. To outsiders, they only know the Manted for these horrific invasions every 100 years. Those ignorant would assume that they're trying to kill off every last remnant of life. But the unique thing about the Manted is that isn't really the case. So what do they want? Huh? You see, the main reason for the swarms is to cull the weak from their empire. Those not fit for Manted society will die and only the strong ah, okay. will return. This has made the Manted stronger with each passing cycle, and they become a bigger and bigger threat to those around them. Those that return are integrated into the caste system of their society, which is led by a council called the Kalaxi. The Kalaxi yeah. are Manted elders and protectors of culture, who focus on the long-term health of the Empire. They even hold power over the Empress, who doesn't live forever, and they ensure the transfer of power from one Empress to the next. This process involves a trial by combat, where the competing queens fight to the death, and the victor devours the defeated. 
Ugh. passing down a long line of power in the hundreds of generations of the Mantis' no, that, that, existence. It's, it's fun. A core part of Mantis society and religion relates to the Kapari amber trees. Each tree is a sacred holy it's not site a world the Mantis, tree, is it? and they harvest its amber to create weapons, art, armor. I actually had this theory that this was also some kind of world tree, just like the night elves have, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's just, just a big tree, right? It doesn't have any deeper meaning, or does it? Harvest its amber to create weapons, art, armor, and architecture. They even use the sap from the trees to place powerful mantid okay. warriors in stasis. Wow. These legends of old are called the Paragons, Paragons and are broken free during dire situations for the Empire. Another advantage these insects have is their acute sense of hearing. The mantid can communicate over incredibly long distances wow. and can hear even the most minute sounds of trespassers entering their lands. There has never been an army that has successfully surprised the mantid. Uh oh. For the Empress! You should have been more careful. During the events of the Mist of Pandaria expansion, the Mantid Swarm surprised the Pandaren by starting their swarm a decade early and being the Wait, largest what? assault in the entire history of Azeroth. This is partly because the current Empress and many of her children have been corrupted by the Shah of Fear. Yeah. The Shah of That's why you have some sort of Shah thing is also when you do the boss fight against the Queen and stuff, right? Like, I've noticed it already, and like, we already see here the Shah, like, look at this, like, this whole area is freaking Shah influence, like, you see this immediately. Actually, I wonder one thing, if this was not, if they were not influenced by the Shah, and they were, like, pure. Like, I wonder if they were pure, if they were actually more friendly. Children have been corrupted by the Shah of Without Fear. Without corruption, maybe they know the not Shah much of The Shah of Fear is one of the seven ghostly remnants of the slain old god, Yasharaj. The Mantid pray for the old god's return, but they do not worship the Shah, who has only brought destruction to their race. To the Shah of Fear, the Mantid are only a tool to spread its influence. Yeah, it's usually with the old gods the like that. Which corrupted Mantid into insanity. Anything and are sending their them. entire empire into the carnage of war in the process. These enraged mantid even broke the serpent shrine wall with their monolithic creatures Kunchong. called the Kunchong. These Kunchong. beasts consume everything in their path, leaving a scar through the land from its devastation. I like sea trap and it's just The mantid alive. fall behind it, then harvest amber-colored waste it secretes, and they create buildings and furniture from the poop. Uh, is that how they are making buildings? So they have this uh, siege sort of kunchong kind of creature, right? With like this ra this ra this species, whatever you call it, just has like a cool name. So they poop and then they make buildings from that. I didn't know that. That's disgusting, but also fascinating at the same time. <laughs> they create buildings uh, and furniture from the poop. Even furniture, so they sit on Yeah, poop. you can find some pretty weird stuff if you actually read archaeology descriptions. Uh, now, not all of the Mantid are corrupted. The Kalaxi still have level-headed minds you and have begrudgingly an ally with the Alliance and Horde okay. yeah. to help stop their corrupted Empress. Throughout the expansion, player characters farm reputation with the Kalaxi and awaken ancient Paragon warriors who then become quest givers. But yeah. once the characters reach Exalted, the leaders of the Mantid Empire make their relationship incredibly clear. What did I say? Waitener, your deeds have earned you the trust of the Klaxi. You are to be rewarded. With what? Walk with me. Uh oh. We Mantid are an elder race. The Pantheran you associate with, they are but children. Okay. They have their role to play. Each cycle, our young swarm their walls. The Pandaren slay the weak, the strong return. With each generation, we grow ever stronger. Before your history began, our empire was vast. We shared this world with our sister kingdoms, Ankiraj and Ajol Nerub. Our gods were many and powerful. We yeah. mantid worship the seven heads of Yasharaj. Great was the old one, and terrible was his wrath. 
He consumed hope and begat despair. He inhaled courage and breathed fear. When the usurpers came, the ones you call titans, Yasharaj was destroyed. It's good. His last terrible breath has haunted this land ever since. But the shadows he left behind are mere whispers of his former glory. I tell you now because you have earned this warning. Your gods are not our gods, outsider. If the old ones ever return, we mounted will once again stand by their side. Wow. So yeah, doing all that stuff for them. And then this guy just says, you know what? Uh, yeah, we are now friendly now and everything's great between us. You know what? Yeah, you have earned our respect. But if ever old God returns, uh, he's like your enemy or something, of course. Um, you know what? I will join them again. <laughs> Like instead of going their own path, they want to go back to a path they had a long, long time ago, and they're waiting for the return of the old gods. And this is something that I I keep saying that maybe we didn't like maybe not. There may be still some old gods, and maybe some old gods are not fully defeated, and maybe they will be reborn or something like that. Like we we don't know about like every final fate of every single old god. Maybe one is like. Maybe cloned himself to a weaker version before he died. Maybe one can somehow go through some rebirth or something. Maybe there's like an old god that was not introduced yet, like a new one. Like I actually think this is my 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 thinking, like my impression that Blizzard at some point will add a new old god, maybe even, and this one will be part of our expansion. The wisest among you will do the same. I don't know if I've made it explicitly clear to you, but I do not like you very much. Wow. Uh-huh. That sucks. The Mantid's betrayal would soon come to pass shortly after, when the Mad War Chief Garrosh Hellscream found the heart of Yasharaj and consumed its power. Time will come when you will answer for your crimes. The time came. <laughs> In the Bitch. The Klaxi and the Paragons of the Mantid followed the War Chief as their new leader and became hostile wow. to the player characters. I did warn you, Wicked. So that's how it happened. And are then a raid boss in the Siege of Orgrimmar. Like, like I knew that, like, Garrosh was gathering, like, new allies and stuff. I also know that they at some point joined. But but they, they were actually joining because this was the heart of the old god they were worshipping and, and he consumed it. So they think he's, like, their new new old god okay it sounds kind of weird right like new old god like how can something be that's new old right but yeah so it was their new old god or something kind of right because he consumed something of their old god so maybe they saw the saw him in him or something and are then a raid boss in the siege of orgrimmar yeah. raid well fox wakener we will meet again but this isn't the last we saw of the Mantid. In the Battle for Azeroth expansion, the old god Nazoth was released from his prison yeah. and attempted to corrupt the whole world of Azeroth. One of the places he hit the hardest was the Vale of Eternal Blossoms, and the remaining Mantid pledged themselves to his service. Unfortunately, the actual lore here and their involvement is incredibly small and is just one of the many torrents of story beats in this expansion. Yeah. But the question is... Will we ever find the Mantid again in Warcraft's story? Maybe. I sure hope so, as the world building, character design, and voice acting are all incredibly unique for the Mantid. That's They're true. also a very rare enemy type in WoW that isn't just a two-dimensional antagonist which is just used as cannon fodder for the player character to slaughter. Yeah. Compare this to an entirely new Mantis-like species introduced in the Dragon Isles called the Scythid. You want to know the story behind these guys? They're territorial and aggressive. Okay, that's all. Yeah, no, that is literally the only thing on their Wait, Wikipedia what? page. Okay, that was interesting. 
That was really interesting. Let me give this one a thumbs up. Like, yeah, I knew about, like, there's some corruption going on with the mantids. That's why you have those kind of shah thingies. You see this, this white kind of stuff on the ground, right? The black smoke and all that that comes from it. Like, I knew that we are doing this, this raid, uh, killing the queen because she's corrupted. Like, I, I know that. But I didn't know, actually, that the corruption came from their old god that they used to worship and if someone consumes for example the heart of the old god like garish did they actually also would worship this person because they see this person as the the old god reborn or something like that that's kind of interesting but yeah i actually didn't know they were like this big in the lore like i just saw some bug creatures that would like attack me i would attack them i thought the raid was kind of cool right and yeah the reputation grind you get some nice stuff from it but i actually didn't know that much about the mantids and that they came from the akir but yo what's up with wow like there's so many evolvements happening we have trolls become uh highborn highborn become night elves they night then they become uh, blood elves or high uh, high elves yeah um then we got freaking zandalari trolls we got dark spear trolls and it's kind of like each time one race or some species goes from one place to another they evolve to something new in wow but that's kind of interesting like it's a good concept i like that actually kind of it's it's interesting but yeah we've learned something new about some villains that actually are bigger than i thought they were interesting but yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. And if you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. I wish everyone a wonderful day. I will see you guys next time.